Top five reasons why an Uber or Lyft driver may give your ass a one star rating as a passenger when you're in our vehicle. What up folks, once again, it is your boy Tim with another ride sharing video. Now this spawned from another driver I saw on social media that gave a list of things that a lot of us drivers do not find favorable from passengers, but I felt his list was not thorough enough. So I figured I'd get on here and talk to the folks. Top five reasons. Starting out with number one, wasting our damn time. Now, wasting our time consists of three different avenues. There's when we get there to pick you up. You can waste our time while you're in the vehicle and you can waste our time getting out of the vehicle. Detailed explanation of that. When we arrive to pick you up, we are expecting the passengers to be ready when we get there. Sitting outside of your damn house, particularly if you live in an unsavory neighborhood, an unsafe neighborhood, we don't want to sit there in our vehicles. So having to sit and wait for a passenger, sometimes up to five minutes or more, is not something us rideshare drivers want to do. Obviously, our cars are on. We may have the air condition running or the heat running. We're wasting fuel. And we're often not making any money of any significance waiting on a passenger. So be prompt, be ready when your ride arrives. And we certainly do not like passengers that are not ready. That could certainly get you a one star. That's when we arrive. Now, while you're in the vehicle, biggest issue, once again, wasting our damn time, stops. I want to stop at the drive-thru. I want to stop at Walmart. Most drivers are making less than a quarter per minute waiting on you. So we do not want to stop. We want to pick you up get you from point A to point B and get on to the next trip. Any time spent wasting, sitting around waiting for you passengers is a loss financially to most drivers. So do not waste our time. And obviously I stated when we arrive, when you're in the vehicle, and then when you get out, when we get you to your destination. I've had passengers who have to phone the person inside the home. Turn on your porch light or could you come outside and help me get these groceries or whatever. We want you out the car because once we've gotten you to your destination, when we're sitting around waiting on you to get out, once again, we are losing money. A lot of passengers want to make sure that they have arrived at a destination and there's somebody home. Why didn't you check that shit out before we drove you all the way here? Find out everything you need so that when you get to your location, you're ready to get out of the damn car. So once again, number one, do not waste our time. Number two, mannerisms in conversation. Once again, this is a detailed explanation. Mannerisms in conversation, obviously loud talking, getting on the phone, having conversations, you know, loaded with all types of language that we may not be in the mood to listen to. So touching while talking, a lot of folks like to talk with their hands so they're touching on a driver. We don't want that shit. Do not touch on drivers. You don't want to be touched, neither do we. Spitting while talking, someone sitting in the front seat next to you talking and fluids are flying out of their mouths while they're talking. We're trying to remain silent so the damn conversation ends and the passenger just wants to keep talking, wants to keep touching. Those are certainly one-star issues. In addition to that, bad subjects. I don't want to hear somebody get in the damn vehicle and start bashing men. I'm African-American. Don't get in my car and start talking a bunch of racist shit. And last but not least, backseat driving. How many of us veteran drivers feel, feel free to state it? Have you ever had to tell someone as a veteran driver, dude, I know where the hell I'm going. I don't need you to try to direct me or go around what the app is telling me to do. As a driver, not only do we often know where the hell we're going, we have GPS provided from the app as well. The last thing we need is a dry, as a passenger trying to tell us what the hell to do. Or better yet, it gets even worse. Bust a U-turn, drive on the shoulder, drive faster. That type of shit, complaining about our driving. Do not get in a rideshare vehicle if you don't want to be driven around. If you're good at driving, drive your own ass from point A to point B. When we're driving, that's what we, we want to do. We do not want somebody in the backseat telling us what the hell to do. 
Veteran drivers, if you had a passenger talking too much shit about your driving, feel free to state it in the comments. Number three, spills and smells, particularly ones that have an aftermath. Now, I personally, I know some other drivers have an issue with passengers eating in their vehicle. I don't mind you eating some food in the vehicle or whatever the case may be. Don't get in my shit eating chitlins and hog mugs. I don't want to smell chitlins, but nevertheless, whatever you're eating, I don't mind you eating. Nevertheless, I stated spills and smells. So when you get out of the vehicle, everything about you should get out of the vehicle with you. If you left smells behind or you spilled things behind, that is a reason for yours truly to be pissed off. And I'm assuming a lot of other drivers would be too. So do not get in a vehicle with anything that's going to leave signs or symbols of your ass behind. Same thing when it comes to picking up folks on the after club crowd, drivers that are inebriated, may possibly vomit in your vehicle. That's a human spill. Now, getting in the vehicle with drinks and things like that that are in glasses. We don't even supposed to have open containers in our vehicle. Any driver in America does not supposed to have an open container in their vehicle. But when you're picking people up walking out of clubs, they will try to get in your vehicle oftentimes with the remaining drink they have left, remaining beer can they have left. And when they get out of your vehicle, Guess where that drink or that beer can is going to be? It's going to be in one of your cup holders. So it's not uncommon if you let a passenger in your vehicle with an open container. It doesn't have to be alcohol even. Even if they get in your vehicle drinking a can of Coke or, you know, a bottle of whatever. When they get out of the vehicle, it's a good chance if you look back there, that bottle or that can empty is in one of your cup holders. So you have to avoid letting letting passengers in your vehicle drinking with shit to begin with because yeah they'll certainly leave it in your vehicle but nevertheless spills and smells certainly eating doritos or something that spills in the vehicle because we have to clean that up the next passenger is not going to entertain well i understand your last passenger left cheetos all over the seat i don't mind sitting on them no us drivers have to take that vehicle out of service go somewhere and vacuum it out at our own expense in terms of paying for a vacuum and the time we're off the clock, vacuuming up somebody else's damn mess. So all of these things will get you a one-star rating. Understand, when we give you a one-star rating, that is telling the system we don't ever want to deal with your ass ever again. That is the purpose of a one-star. Do not match me up with this passenger ever again, period. Number four, extra work for no pay. I don't give a damn what you do for a living. Chances are you do not favor your employer providing you with extra work for no pay. In the ride sharing business, extra work for no pay could mean wheelchairs, assisted devices, people with laundry bags, grocery bags that need help with this stuff. Now, I can pull up, pop the trunk, and you'll put every damn thing you got in there. I can pull up to your house, pop the trunk, and you'll take everything out. So be it. But a lot of passengers need assistance with all of the stuff they're putting in your vehicle. And for us drivers, that is extra work with no pay. Because our sole job as a rideshare driver is to get you from point A to point B in a clean car expeditiously. That is it. We don't supposed to or have to get out and physically help you with bags and things like that. That's all going above and beyond. Not saying we don't... don't you know, not saying you shouldn't do it if a passenger is generous or something like that, or if you just want to, but that's not an expectation that the passenger should have. A lot of drivers are not even physically able to get out and help folks with physical chores. But I'm going to give you number five that would tie into the first four and maybe even erase some of the issues we have with them. No tip. Giving a driver no tip is a reason for most drivers to not favor doing business with you again. So a hell of a lot of passengers that do not tip the drivers. However, as I just stated, one through four, wasting our time, mannerism, spills and complaints, extra work for no pay. If you tip us properly, none of that shit will matter. I don't care what you spill in my vehicle. There is enough of a tip you can give me to forget that shit ever happened. So tipping is exceptionally important. 
But if you are the typical rideshare passenger that gets out and provides a driver with zero, then don't complain when that driver does not want to come back and see your ass again. So tipping is the most important issue on the list. Us rideshare drivers, everybody knows, it's no damn secret that we don't earn a lot of money. So tips are a great way to supplement our low income. No different than a waitress or someone in a bar, bartending or whatever. But a lot of passengers, as I said, probably about two thirds of passengers never tip Uber or Lyft drivers. So it is what it is. But I just wanted to provide that list. I do have one honorable mention. mention and I'd be curious to know from some of you veteran drivers out there in the comments, what are some of the things that a passenger could do to make you absolutely certain beyond a reasonable doubt? I don't want to ever deal with that person's ass again. Not ever. I don't ever want a trip from that individual again. Feel free to state in the comments. Maybe I missed one. Honorable mention, slamming the damn door on the way out. We pay for these vehicles. These, these are all our vehicles. 100% of the expense. There's nothing Uber pays for on the driver's car at all. Insurance, if you put a ding or a dent in the vehicle, chip the paint, cut the seats, none of that shit is covered by Uber or Lyft. We can sometimes plead to them to charge your credit card extra if you leave a pile of vomit in our shit or somebody decides that it's that time of the month and they forgot to wear a tampon, which has happened before. Nevertheless, it's up to Uber or Lyft to decide if they even believe what the hell we're trying to say. I've done videos on drivers that had somebody vomit in their vehicle three times in a month. And Uber stated, we cannot cover it because you filed too many claims. Not that the driver was lying. They just decided we're not going to charge anybody else on the driver's behalf. So he had to purchase the detailing, whatever the case may be, for his own damn vehicle. And getting a vehicle detailed that smells like sour ass vomit, 100, 200 bucks, you never know what it's going to cost. But let me know in the comments, what the hell did I miss? Do not slam our doors on the way out. Just gently close the damn door. It's your boy Tim. Subscribe to the channel as always. And I'll see you in the next video.